you ever look at your profit and loss statement and it just seems like Greek to you? It's a bunch of numbers on a page or on a spreadsheet and you just can't decode what, uh, uh, what it's trying to tell you. Well, the truth is you're not alone and many entrepreneurs are in exactly that same space. I'm Nick Farrow with Abundance Global. I'm gonna show you how with four easy numbers you can decode your profit and loss. First thing though, we need to understand a couple of things about the profit and loss that are really important to our sort of background to know. Picture yourself at a football game. Up in the stadium, there's a, uh, there's a scoreboard there. And right through the game, you can refer back to that scoreboard. The players can and they know what the, what the score is. And profit and loss is exactly like a scoreboard at a football game. If you wait till the end of the football game, or in the case of, uh, of our finances, wait till the end of the financial year and get your profit and loss, you actually haven't been able to use your profit and loss to, to make strong strategic decisions as, as you went through the year. So first important thing with your profit and loss, all entrepreneurs should be getting this done on a monthly basis. If you're waiting till the end of the quarter, end of the half, end of the financial year, the game's over and you don't know what the score is. So you've got to get this done on a monthly basis. The second thing that you need to know about this is that your profit and loss, in order for you to manage your business, should be prepared on an accrual basis. Now that's an accounting term, you don't need to know the full details of it. There is cash accounting and there's accrual accounting. Your, your accounting software that your bookkeeper uses is able to switch between the two very easily. So you don't need to worry about it other than I want you to make sure that this is on an accrual basis. You're gonna to report to the tax office on a cash basis. You're gonna manage your business on an accrual basis. The next thing you need to know about a profit and loss, it's kind of like a movie. A movie has a start point and it has an end point. And that's exactly the same with a profit and loss. So let's say this is a profit and loss for the month of January. This is a profit and loss starting at the opening of business on the 1st of January, going right through to closing on the, on the 31st of, of January. So it's that defined period of time. So let's think of this as a movie. It has that, it has that defined time to it. Okay, so let's turn to this profit and loss now and what we're actually trying to read from it. The first thing that is, uh, that's going to be at front of mind for you is that we're capturing on this profit and loss is your revenue. What was your revenue during that period of time, during the course of the movie, during the course of, in this case, January? And revenue generally is going to be sales. Now, you may break it down into more categories and we strongly recommend you do. But for the sake of today's exercise, we just need to uh, know what that revenue number is. The second thing is, that's on here, is going to be your expenses. Now, our expenses, we actually need to break down a little bit further than just sales in order for you to decode what this uh, document, this profit and loss is telling you. The first thing is we need to know how much did it actually cost you to produce the revenue of your sales. And the figure we use is known as your cost of goods sold, your COGS. You need to know what your COGS is uh, on your profit and loss. The second part of the expenses we need to know is your general and administrative expenses. Now, I want to just give you a quick uh, explanation of what the two are is, so when you look at any expense item, you know where, where that's going to be categorised. Let's just say you're in the building game, you build houses. One of the costs of selling the house that you've built is things like you need timber to build the house. You need nails to, to connect the two pieces of timber together. And you're also going to need a person to bang the nail into the timber. Each one of those are great examples of cost of goods sold. These are the expenses you have to actually produce the good that you're selling. Okay? You need to know that number. The next number that you need to know is, are your general and administrative expenses. These are the things that probably don't change much from month to much from month to month. So it's, what was your electricity bill to run the office? Keep the internet on, pay your insurance. Do you have a receptionist who's not banging nails into timber or some other administrative function like your CFO or someone else in your business that is an expense? Your bookkeeper, your accounting fees. 
These are uh, really important general administrative expenses. If you're not sure which one of your expenses falls into which category here, really simple. If you were to build twice as many houses or twice as many of whatever it is that you produce or the services that you sell, if you were to produce twice as many, you probably need somewhere near twice as many of these items. You're going to build twice as many houses, you're going to need twice as much timber, twice as many nails, twice as many people to bang uh, the, the nails in. If you're going to build twice as many houses, you don't need twice as many lights in your office. You don't need uh, two internet connections. So a great way to split up what those expenses are. Now let's, give, uh, let's have some examples here. Let's say that on this business's profit and loss for the month of January, total sales, total revenue was $100,000. We'll have a nice round number. We've got some expenses that are attached to that. And let's say the cost of producing that, your cost of goods sold was 35,000, right? We've got roughly around a three to one ratio of the cost of producing the good to, uh, to what this, the revenue was that you generated. And let's say that the general and administrative expense was another, let's say 30,000. To, to run your office and, and your, uh, your uh, overheads like that. So we know straight up for this period, we've got so far three numbers. Number one is what's our revenue? What's our actual sales? What came in the door to us during this month? Gotta know that number. Second number that we have to know, what did it cost us to produce that revenue? Third number, what did it cost us to keep the business running? And then the fourth number is actually the profit or loss figure that relates from this. So, I'm gonna do some quick maths here. 100,000 came in, 35 it cost us to produce it. That left us with, uh, with 65,000. Another 30 to run the business. That leaves us with a profit now of 35,000 from this period of time. Those are the four numbers that you must know on a monthly basis for your business. And if you don't know those, you are flying blind. When you look back to your uh, profit and loss and it, and it looks like great to you, there's gonna be dozens, perhaps hundreds of numbers that make up these. All I want you to do is go and find these. Total revenue, cost of producing that revenue, cost of goods sold, your general and admin expenses, and what your profit was for that period. Or if you are, uh, or more to the point, if you've made a loss, you definitely need to know that figure as well. I really hope from watching this video that you now have some real certainty and clarity on how you're going to look at your profit and loss and find those four key numbers that you need to be able to fly your business with, with absolute certainty. Now I have another video on, uh, on how to decode a balance sheet and the key numbers you as an entrepreneur need there. So what you wanna do is click the link below and we'll go straight there and I'll show you exactly how to do it.